these are the first three panels of 10. They're 1.8 by 1.8 metres and they will join up to make a large panorama which is um, going to be based on the river. My process enables me to create paintings that are about mystery and depth and sure they're going to have a theme, the river, but even at this point I've got no idea what it's going to turn out like by the end. When I got these big white canvases I just stared at them for a few days, I, I couldn't touch them. I mean and then I had to just throw some paint on them to sort of destroy that whiteness and get going. So this painting is about the river journey and I guess it's something that talks about the position of the Supreme Court right in the CBD in Perth and its relationship to the river. So that part of the river is, is kind of in the middle. It's called Perth Waters. And so feeding that from the sea, you have influences coming in from the sea and you have influences coming from the fresh water or the rains on the Darling Escarpment coming down the river and they pretty much meet at Perth Water. Well, basically this is just a stencil um, for the blue manor crab and so I've cut it out of plastic and it's going to be become you know a way for me to play around with the crab on the, on the canvas. It's a pretty big project to start yeah but I'm really happy now I'm into it. These are sort of oval shapes for me, they're representing the body, people's bodies being immersed in the river. So I didn't want to do a representational body. They're made of red gum resin, and that resin is collected from trees, and then it's put into uh, methylated spirits, which makes it melt. It's because they're made of a material that comes from the side of the river, the Murray trees, particularly West Australian, and they seem to float in the river. So they're, they're freestanding, they float along in the river. Um, and they're of a different material to oil paint. So they're actually a resin from the trees. This is where everything I do has a big impact because can't really go back and can't go forward very far and I don't want to put too much on because I don't want to kill the painting um, and by kill the painting that's when you overdo it it's actually more important to do less than more <laughs> and that's the hard bit that's a, sort of a critical point which as an artist you have to always think about um, you know that that tendency to want to tidy it all up or make it pretty or uh, make things work, you know, just to leave it rougher and freer. Yeah, you can see every mistake in this light. It's very interesting to get to the end of this project and I'm almost feeling like it's too small to actually cope with my idea and images of the river. So even though it's so huge, you know, to actually try and get that scope of the river was fairly ambitious. So I think it sort of jumps along a bit, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. They've got real dusty being in here. It's been wonderful to be able to paint on a large scale. There's a certain freedom in that. We always photograph an RGB yeah. and we will also output through an RGB file.
process has been very organic and, and very free. Um, and the decisions are made collaboratively. So on this project, my best work happens when Joe's sitting right beside me. See on there those little ones? I'm applying layers of um, small shape elements over the top of Joe's painted surfaces. And then by manipulating those layers, I'm able to have them um, okay, respond so to and react to the painted surface beneath. What I'll do, um, invert it. There we go, it's starting to respond to the painted surface underneath. We're having a bit of difficulty putting it in, but it's going to look fantastic when it's finished. I think it's been two, two and a half years since we began, so it's pretty amazing to actually be here in the Supreme Court hanging the artwork. Are you able to see? Yeah, go up a little bit higher and then drop down before you drop down. That's it now. Now drop down. That's yep, it. we're on. work to make five different levels of digital glass that would uh, sort of talk more about the river on, on di in different ways. Some of those layers go across the river so you might talk about salinity and naming the river with European names. Then you've also got uh, the history of the Supreme Court so the history of, of law across this land. And on the other floors, we've got a more abstract look. So we're, we're looking at invertebrates underneath the water in the river. Um, and so that kind of looking at different ways of looking at the river, whether it be above or below and metaphorically, is what we've tried to do with the five layers of glass. Rick and I had a lot of fun with this process because we saw it as, as being a painterly process. And when I say painterly, I mean it's not just a digital image that's superimposed over a painting. We actually played around with colours and transparency and the colours underneath to, to work in a way that you do with painting. It's the magenta end of the spectrum. It's been bloody difficult to get the colours looking like this. It's been a lot of work, which Rick Burney did, to work with DigiGlass to get the technology to be able to handle these striking pinks and these sort of aqua green colours all happening in the one work. I mean, as a painter, you want people to see your work, obviously. Let's hope that people enjoy the river journey, you know, for many years to come.